Hello amazing people. I wanted to introduce to you something that's really passionate um, for me is this amazing Syntropic Farm. Syntropic Agroforestry I first got introduced about a year ago. It was in the midst, it was part of a permaculture design course. I then went to Malaysia and did a bit more of a thorough course and now I thought I'd come and visit Australia, which is where I am at Gabala Syntropic Farm in northern New South Wales, to come and check out their Syntropic Farm. And I wanted to talk to you about why I love Syntropic Farming so much. It basically is designed to replicate nature. Now, nature naturally thrives. It goes in a succession. It naturally um, builds, you know, it'll start off and, with shrubs and grasses and certain things. Then if you leave it alone, um, bigger, more woodier things happen and so forth until it becomes an abundant rainforest kind of, um, not necessarily rainforest, depending where you are in the world, but um, it grows in abundance. The abundance is the the further on in the natural succession so what I wanted to show you was um, it's like it's almost like artwork it's almost like design we've just planted this particular row here and we've actually gone over with all the different seeds that we're planting in the one go and so it's worked on time and space so certain things will grow faster than others and certain things will protect the smaller things until they grow up and grow bigger so for example lettuce or cos lettuce down here um, often grows quicker and will protect the smaller things that take a bit longer then you pull out the cos and then you've got the other things for example here broccoli is actually um, the emergent here and this emergent means the highest strata in the in the in the consortium and so um, I just wanted to come and show you. So in here we've got bananas, we've got eucalyptus trees. Um, in amongst things, something that's really cool I want to show you here. Um, let's have a look. So down here you've got cabbage, cos, kale. Um, but where was the amazing... Oh, I think it's over here. That's right. So underneath here, I'm just going to use my camera you see this this is a carrot growing underneath the radishes there's some beautiful radishes I had earlier but the radishes the carrots while they're little seedlings they're being protected by let's have a look see if we can see some others by the radishes um, oh, I can't remember which road there we go see see hidden under there so these are protecting from the Sun which is what happens in nature. So, um, yeah, if we go up here, we've got, um, the other thing is nature doesn't let soil, like go, when soil is just open and bare, or it becomes dry, the, the microorganisms die because it's too hot and dry. So you'll notice that all the soil is covered everywhere. And we often use, um, so here we've got oats, um, this is a bit of lucerne growing from the previous one, but so these oats will end up being cut and used as biomass immediately over on the next one to help protect the soil and help the more biodiversity, the more, um, the more, spit it out Haley. the more biodiverse and nutrient rich the soil becomes and therefore your veggies and fruits become even more abundant as well. So we've got eucalyptus that's also used for biomass and it grows really really quickly if you can see there's pineapple here um, it's amazing what's what's inside here have a look at the silver beet hidden inside in amongst here bananas bananas are used are very sort of um, highly used because it's got great biomass you know, um, what I mean by biomass is cutting it down and covering the soil and that slowly dis um, decomposes, excuse me, uh, and becomes awesome. So it's just, and um, something that's really interesting is when you do walk in one of these, when I go for a walk in here, I'm just gonna turn this around. Um, oh, I'm walking on logs, which is part of the decompose, you know, the biomass. When you come in here, it's actually quite warm and humid. It creates this natural environment. It's just so super lush. 
And so one of the reasons why, um, what uh, this was all started uh, in Brazil, this kind of method called by Ernst Gutsch, um, and it's called Syntropic Agroforestry. And it, um, he created sort of these principles to follow and he just wanted to replicate nature. And he's, if you go on, onto YouTube and watch Life in Syntropy, it's a 15 minute little mini doco about what he did with his acres. And he did this, these principles and over 40 years learnt these, these principles on that land. And it actually increased the rain in that um, area, which was quite drought before, drought stricken before. So you can see here many different beautiful, uh, that's broccoli, I think, kale, cos, I don't know if you can see, there's the silver beet amongst the oats. More, um, oh, we've got citrus here amongst those. There's papaya over there. Yeah, it's building the consortium. And so underneath this soil that used to be just a pasture land and quite dry, it will now be so bio biodiverse and rich and you're constantly building the soil so this agriculture ends up building the soil rather than depleting it after overuse um lots of cassava here that can be used to cassavas and you can use it to protect plants when you first build a, the placenta is what they call it when you build, put all the seeds in at once all the tree seeds fruit seeds all of it um seedlings all at the same time so that it all grows together. And it's like, if you can imagine an orchestra, so the cars will grow in 30, 60 days. Then the, um, then the, it can be, oh my gosh, I'm having a mind blank. Spinach, I'm, I'm getting that, the syntropic agroforestry people will correct me, but yeah, certain things. And then later like corn will grow over 90 days. Um, and then something else will become the emergent. So it's this, your, your garden will never be the same, but from the same area, you're getting many different crops, many different yields. So yeah, anyway, I'm super passionate about it. It again helps bring carbon from the forest, carbon from the air. It helps store carbon again. So it's helping with climate change. Um, it's just super awesome. And you're getting amazing fruit and veggies for those people who want to heal themselves naturally these if you create a beautiful consortium which is the the biodiversity there isn't a need for pesticides because often pests in syntropic agroforestry they use it's known as um well they it, the pests are showing something's missing or something's there's too much of something and so the pest turns up and so it's not don't see it as a pest see it as it's communicating to you that something is out of balance in your area and that's why when you do a monocrop there is often a lot of balance because where in nature do you see just one thing growing? There is normally a massive biodiversity just in one tiny little area. So anyway, welcome to this world. Let me know if you want to know more about this. This really excites me and I hope to share more. I'm hoping to share more how you can grow your own little gardens. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.